One approach that was taken to solve the problem with the 17 instructions was to rewrite the binary of the guest VM so that it never really issues any one of these operations. This process is called binary translation. This approach was pioneered by research at Stanford University by a group led by Professor Mendel Rosenblum, and subsequently this was commercialized as VMware. Now, some 15 plus years and $30, $40 billion later, VMware still owns by far the largest share of the virtualized cores in the server market. Rosenblum later received the ACM Fellow Award, and in the recognition, he was specifically credited for reinventing virtualization. He served as VMware's chief scientist for about 10 years and now is back full-time at Stanford. Let me give you now a brief description of what binary translation actually is. A key thing to note is that the goal that's pursued by VMware is to run unmodified guest operating systems, meaning that we don't need to install any special drivers or policies or otherwise to change the guest OS in order to run in a virtualized environment. As a startup, they clearly couldn't tell Microsoft to modify Windows so that VMware can improve its success rate. So this type of virtualization where the guest OS is not modified is called full virtualization. The basic approach consists of the following. Instruction sequences that are about to be executed are dynamically captured from the VM binary. And this is typically done at some meaningful granularity like a basic block such as a loop or a function. Now, the reason that this is done dynamically versus statically, so upfront before any code is actually run, is because the exact execution sequence may depend on the parameters that are available at runtime. So it's input dependent. So you cannot really do all of this in an efficient way statically upfront. Or in some cases, you just cannot do it at all because you don't have the input parameters. So then you dynamically capture these code blocks and then inspect them to see whether any of these 17 infamous instructions is about to be issued. If it turns out that the code block doesn't have any of these bad instructions, it's marked as safe and allowed to execute natively at hardware speeds. However, if one of the bad instructions is found in the code block, then that particular instruction is translated into some other instruction sequence that avoids the undesired instruction and in some way emulates the desired behavior. This can possibly be achieved even by bypassing a trap to the hypervisor. Certainly, binary translation adds overheads and a number of mechanisms are incorporated, specifically in the VMware solutions, in order to improve the efficiency of the process. These things include mechanisms such as uh, caching code fragments that correspond to the translated basic blocks, so that the translation process can be avoided in the future. Also, the steps like distinguishing which portions of the binary should be analyzed, for instance, distinguishing between the kernel and the application code and making sure that the kernel code is the one that's analyzed, and various other optimizations. 